the phone number for next week's, week's conference call to stay up with the courtroom uh, observers and courtroom watch. We're going to have still have the online courtroomwatch.com, and we'll keep Tom's details posted up there. Um, we're, we usually wait a little closer to trial to do a phone blitz, but since it's he's been rescheduled back, re reinstated back into a solitary confinement, we got to start putting the phone calls again right away. And this falls on the sheriff Byron trap. But anyway, next week we'll also have a conference call. So if people don't aren't able to go online and they want to stay on a nightly update. We're going to do uh, 8 to 10 Eastern or maybe 7 to 9. And the number is going to be 515-604-9703. That's 515-604-9703. And there's a code you got to pound in. It's six digits, 754-153. That's 754-153. And I'm going to encourage uh, Chris to stay with us as a guest, and we're going to stay updated on his matters. And also look, both of the lorries are going to stay with me, and hopefully. And uh, we'll just kind of continue as we are here. So once again, 515-604-9703. And the access code is 754153 pound. I think you got to hit the pound after the access code. So 754-153 pound, and that'll get you into the call. And we welcome people to join us next week. Let's shoot for 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific, um, courtroom watch conference call with Eric the Freedom Screamer. And we'll just keep doing what we're doing and getting her done. Um, I'm going to miss Mike on the board. He did a great job putting up the clips. And my gosh, neither me or Lori Anderson or none of us could have done it, or Tom. Could have done it without Mike on the board and his help. Um, invaluable. We appreciate that. And John Statmiller for the time he did give me here. And with that, we're going to turn it over to Lori Anderson. Hello, everyone. Awesome. How are you doing this evening? Good. It Hang is so there. good. Um, I, aside from all the technical difficulties <laughs> and craziness that has gone on for the past, I want to say that all our listeners are the most amazing listeners. I want to thank you, John Statmiller. I want to thank you, Mike, so much. Eric, you are right. Without Mike, um, we could not have been able to put a lot of things together that we did put together, and we highly appreciate the time that they have given us on RBN Network. However, I do want to kind of make a comment. Just because we're not going to be on RBN does not mean – that Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio Broadcast is not going to continue broadcasting. We are. We are still going to continue covering things. It's just going to be in a different format. We'll be uploading YouTubes and uh, interviews and stuff like that at, at different time frames. It won't be an every night thing, but we are going to try to keep this together, and we are going to continue um, to get the truth out to you as best as we can, just like with with Eric was speaking about the conference call. So we will not stop um, speaking truth and getting the messages out to you all. You can uh, find Eric like at courtroomwatch.org. You can find uh, resurrecttherepublic.com. Uh, I believe that there is another one. Lori, what is the RTR? RTRtruthmedia.com. Okay, rtrtruthmedia.com. You can follow me individually on my Google Plus, which is you can simply look up Lori Anderson, L O R R I A N D E R S O N on Google Plus. And there is sections there actually for Resurrect the Republic, uh, RTR Truth Radio broadcast on there, and for Courtroom Observers, which is Courtroom Watch, and uh, different things like that. I update that as much as possible if it does not have a huge liberty bell in the background it is a shadow one and it is not me i also um will be uploading to youtube as soon as i can get all the technical stuff worked out and um that you can find under dancing wind 1970 on the youtubes so we're not disappearing we're not dissipating we're just not going to be on rb in uh right now anymore tonight is the last night we love you all we are going to miss you all we enjoy speaking with every one of you 
Now, on that note, you know me. I have to chime in and and say what's on my mind when it comes to current events. And obviously, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to say this about the Syria situation and about Mr. Trump. Whether he was fooled or tricked or not, okay, whether it was a quote-unquote strategic plan or not, whether or not, and it's pretty clear this is a false flag attack, but let's pretend for a moment that it was not a false flag attack. You still cannot justify bombing Syria for that attack period, and I'll give you a prime reason why. Number one, America was not attacked, and I'm going to give you a, a, an example of what I mean by this because so many people, they seem to think, oh, well, it was a chemical attack, so, so we had the right to do that. So let's refresh some memories here. Waco, Texas, you remember that? Waco, Texas in 1993, they used incinerary devices that were, um, that were flashbangs and the different things that held chemicals in it that they knew caught fire. 76 people died and burned to death by our government. Now, the individuals who were saying, well, we, we had a right to bomb over there because those people – were under a chemical attack, then in that same scenario, that means back in the day in 1993, according to that mindset, Syria would have had a right to come over here and bomb our government because our government had attacked our people and used chemical devices as well as burned our people alive. So do you see how crazy that sounds? You would sure see do. that as an act of war. No matter what the excuse is, it is illegal, it is unconstitutional, and it is absolutely an act of war. There was no approval by Congress. There's not been war declared since World War II. It does not matter if somebody tries to use AUMF excuses. It does not matter. If we are going to be truly for the people and we're truly going to be for America – if we're truly going to be for making America great again, it does not matter who is fooled. Of all people, President Donald Trump should know very well that people are attacking him from all sides internally and externally. He should not have gone off of any hearsay. This is the same scenario they did in 2013 and tried to pull us into a war. Question, peace talks were be, to be done the next day. OK, yep. Assad was winning the civil war. ISIS yep. was being drawn back. They had gained over 16 territories. There is no absolutely no reason whatsoever, even in the craziest scenario, that Assad would have done that. Why? Because Trump had just announced that he was for the people picking their own president. He also was gaining um I wouldn't say friendliness, but at least a working situation with Russia. So what the, whether he was fooled or whether he wasn't fooled is irrelevant. The point is the neocons just got what they wanted. They helped ISIS. They did a divide to where Russia has no need to trust us now. Syria has no need to trust us now. And once again, because it's unconstitutional, what happens? We're the bully of the world, and it's an act of war. Whether you want to believe it's an act of war or not, if you in your mind picture Waco and Syria were to send jets over here under that excuse and were to have bombed us because of it because they attacked civilians with chemicals, it was chemicals, that's what created those fires, 76 people and most of them children, I'm just saying – so would you justify Syria by saying Syria had the right to come in and bomb us and it wasn't an act of war? No, you wouldn't. We have to stop and we have to think rationally. And, you know, there's a lot of things that President Trump does that I agree with. 
there's a lot, but I'm going to call a spade a spade. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. It's unconstitutional. It's illegal. And it is an act of war. And it's unexcusable. And anyone who has been uh, fighting mainstream media left and right, the neocons, he knows he's been betrayed, has no reason whatsoever to absolutely do that and go off of what has been said without some kind of solid proof. And there's not enough time for that solid proof. Now, on that, like I said, 76 were killed in Waco. Now, you're talking about, uh, from from the reports that I've seen, 100 in Syria. So what did that, what, who did it benefit? It benefited ISIS. It benefited the terrorists. And then, of course, great old traitor John McCain comes out, and I really hope that Trump arms the 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 rebels, the Free Syrian Army. Well, yeah, you do want them him to arm and continue giving the weapons to the terrorists. The only ones that were helped with that bombing was the terrorists, even if. Not one person died, which they did. According to reports, people have died. Syrian military. This is not an act of going against ISIS. I've also seen people talking about, oh, well, he's killing the terrorists. No, he's killing the one who's, he was bombing the ones who are killing the terrorists. Right. We're supporting the terrorists in every way. We're bombing the government. And, and this, by the way, if it weren't for the Russians, the Russians basically just cleaned up the mess in, 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 in Syria that our intelligence agencies made by creating these mercenary armies. Uh, and, and, now, and now we're going to come in, and, and if this is authentic, what a real slap in the face to the Russians. I'm not sure what is staged and what is not, but I know 59 cruise missiles on Syria is absolutely absurd, and it's a, it's, it's a war crime. And we have we have what's going on in this country right now is the mirror image of what happened in Nazi Germany just before World War II. They rounded up all the patriots at home. They took everybody to war to try to distract them from the great patriot roundup at home. And I'm not saying it's great, but it's immense and it's enormous and it's coast to coast nationwide. They're rounding up people. Look what they're doing to Tom. So people, this is already hit home. Go ahead, Lori. I want to I want to say this too, Eric, because we only have a few minutes. So I want to say this too. Everybody at the sound of my voice, please look up the quote-unquote Syrian attacks. I want you to look at these pictures very carefully because let me tell you something about sarin gas. A sarin gas, you have to have hazmat on. You have to have the real masks on. If you look at these pictures, they're using regular face masks like what you use for the flu. They are barehanded, most of them. These are the quote-unquote workers on these people. I'm not even so sure that I'm buying that it was a sarin gas attack. And maybe we have not no one idea. of those drills. It could, be, it, could, it could be entirely staged. They've had crisis they, actors on the scene for, for God knows how long. They're, they were running ads for crisis actors uh, on the Internet for people to participate in these staged, fabricated, bogus, fake, made-up, phony events to try to whip the American sheeple into a frenzy so they'll send the boys and girls off to die and well, make a whole bunch of money along the way to a world control. Right, and all I know is this. You've got white hats there. It's been exposed what the white hats support, and that's al-Qaeda, okay? So we know them getting there so quickly, first of all, is one of the red flags. Another one is they're using regular masks like what you would for the flu. Some of them have the masks under their chin. They're breathing around there. If there is sarin around there, they're not going to be doing that, okay? They're not. Now, let me give some information. Mean, we got one. We got one minute. Can we pick this up in the conference call? I want to give people information for their activism. We got. Sure, you cannot absolutely. forget about. And I just want to say, one I minute left. say people, I love you all, a- and and thank you for taking the time to listen to us. I love you, Eric. Take it away. And from Thanks, Texas, Tom, Lord, Lockup, thank you guys. Don't also. forget about Tom. We got Tom in jail. Tom's back in solitary. Tom's only help is us. Tom's only, only other than Jesus, his only physical help is going to be coming from you, who hears this right now. Continue to support Tom. Call everybody you can on his behalf. He's being held in Lane County Jail in Eugene, Oregon still, in solitary confinement, 22 out of 24 hours every day. And it's affecting him. You can tell by the letter that was written tonight. People, don't forget about Tom. We'll be posting information on his situation and many others at courtroomwatch.com at Lori Anderson's Google Plus 
at RTR Truth Media and any place else we can think of. We're always resurrectorepublic.com. Okay, and so follow the cases there, and um, I really appreciate you people hanging in there with us. Thank you to the network and everybody else. Thanks again, Mike, on the board, and all you listeners who supported us. We love you, and we appreciate it. Join us for the conference call next week and uh, post archives to this show out on the Internet so people can hear what we're doing. Thank you, everybody. We love you. Have a good one. See you next week. Take care. You all are amazing. This is not the end. And from Tom, thank you guys for everything you're doing to help out. It's appreciated more than you'll ever know. Thank you. Take care, people. Stay tuned to courtroomwatch.com. I'll try to post as much as I can there. And studio1776.org will be rising in the very near future.